Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Kind of a, a sad, somber topic today. We're talking about massive losses, $30,000 losses. I don't know if you saw this story, but a trader took a $30,000 loss on a seemingly pretty low risk, safe-ish options play where they sold a put spread and it was only a dollar wide put spread. And I want to break this down and talk about this because I think everyone needs to be aware of this one thing that can hang you up if you're new to options trading. Even if you have some experience with options trading, you may not know about this pitfall in terms of expiration dates and selling spreads. I wanna dive into that a little bit and I have to thank one of my members in our private Facebook group because he sent me a video and it was on this topic where this guy did a really nice breakdown of this whole situation and what happened and I wanna post that card up in the corner. I'll post that at the end of this video so you guys can watch this video and then take a look at another perspective. But the reason I wanted to come out and make this video is because I wanted my viewers to see this and see this explained by me. I'm gonna simplify things a little bit I'm not gonna throw a ton of jargon at you because I think when you get a lot of options trading jargon, you lose a lot of the beginners or even some of the, the advanced beginners, you can lose them and they won't fully get the point. The one goal of this video is to hammer home how exactly you can avoid losing $30,000 in a simple put spread by taking two steps. I'm gonna give you two steps that will absolutely remove this risk. So stay tuned, watch this entire video, and if you don't understand even one point or one topic or one sentence in this video, put a comment below, let me know, ask questions, I'll clarify, and then if I need to make another video where I make it even simpler, I can do that. I can make a whole separate video where we go over it again. That way everyone understands this topic and this problem so that it doesn't happen to you. So with that, let's jump into the charts. All right, thank you so much for joining this video. I'm gonna start off today by using the whiteboard and then I'm gonna jump over into the charts to show you exactly what happened. But the first thing I want you to understand is what type of trade that this trader had put on. I want you to understand that type of trade. Now this is called selling a put spread. So what happened was this trader had sold this 409. So what this trader had done was sold a 410 put and bought a 409 put. So basically what that means is anything that comes in below 410, so if the price of the stock closes below 410 on expiration day at the close of the markets, they would be obligated to purchase 100 shares at 410. Now, as price drops to 409, what this trader did was they capped their risk because anything that goes below 409 in this case actually gains in value. This is their hedge. So the only risk this trader had on was the difference between 409 and 410. So the risk on this trade was only $1 per share. So being that a contract is 100 shares, they were risking $100. Now this trader had this on five times, so five contracts, meaning they were risking around $500. This trader also got paid a credit to do this trade, but that's beyond the scope of this. I'm not gonna get into that. I'm just gonna say they were risking about $500, and their only risk was $1 wide, between 410 and 409. So you might say, okay, great. How could they then lose if they were protected, if they have a capped limit? They cannot lose below 409 as long as this put is in place. They bought this put, they sold this put. So they could be obligated to purchase it if it goes below 410, but they aren't obligated for anything below 409. So that's all we need to know about the put spread. They sold this put spread and it was a dollar wide. Now, let's jump to the chart real quick. So let's come over here. This is the day in question. This is Tesla, and Tesla's trading on September 4th. So I'm gonna draw the 410 in real quick. Let's put a line in here, and then let's just make it, let's make it exact. Let's edit this, and I'm gonna make it 410 exactly, just so that you know exactly where this is. 
So if price closes below this line, they will have to purchase basically 500 shares of Tesla at 410 because they had five contracts. So they were risking $500 on a $30,000 account. So it's not as bad as you think when you look at it face value, but what happens is Tesla comes along and climbs back above that level and closes for the day right here. Closes at four, we'll call it $418. So the trader's saying, ooh, I'm safe. It closed above 410 because it closed at 418. So that means that this position, this options contract will expire worthless. But that's the hang up. What a lot of people don't realize, and I learned this not the hard way, but I learned this early on and was sort of made to feel a little uneasy about it was, when the market closes at four o'clock Eastern time or two o'clock my time, there's a 90 minute window after the close where options contracts can be exercised. Okay, so, so you might say, well, what does that mean? What that means is if my market closes here, you can see on my chart at two o'clock, that means until 1530, this options contract can be exercised and you might be starting to see what I'm talking about. This after hours was cruising around. This trader thought, great, I'm gonna go enjoy my long weekend. I made a little money on my Tesla put that I sold on my put spread, everything's good. Well, as you can see right here when I hover this, at 3.15 p.m., this big red candle came in and price pushed all the way down as low as 393.01. So what happened was whoever was holding the other end of this contract decided to exercise that 410 put and they took advantage of it, which obligated this trader to purchase 500 shares at $410. But the problem was this trader was gone for the weekend. No one's watching this. So because they got exercised here, if this trader had been watching this in the after hours, they could have said, oh, wow, it's below 410. I'm going to get exercised. I better go ahead and close my position and take it out. Because as long as this position is open for this trader, they still have that 409 protective put to the downside. But at 330, it expired because it expired on this Friday. And because of that, the put is now gone. So in this example, this put right here is now gone. And this 410 put was exercised. So now that protective layer boom, just vanished. It's gone. So then what happens is Tesla continues to drop and drop and drop and drop. And this is happening in the absence of that protective put. So this trader comes back to the markets on Monday morning I'm sorry, Tuesday morning because of Labor Day on the 8th and finds out they've been put shares at 410. But at that point, the share price was $60 lower. Now because of that, down $60 on 500 shares is minus $30,000. And that's what happened. That's how simple this is. All that happened was they got exercised in that 90 minute window that a lot of people don't know about. When the market closes, that does not mean that your options contract is done. It means now we're in this little grace period that the options contractors or the brokers allow for any exercising options to come in. They have until an hour and a half, 90 minutes after the close. And this trader obviously didn't know that because they left their screens. Now, at 3.30, now this trader could have saved this position if they'd been watching and exercised their option, exercised their put that they bought, that protective put, if they would have exercised that by 3.30, they would have been saved. But they didn't because they weren't watching the screens and they were gone. So they wake up, come into the trade on Monday morning expecting a larger account because they had a nice win on Friday. And on Tuesday, sorry, they find out they're $60 lower. So that breaks me into a whole other topic here is what are the two surefire ways to avoid this problem? There is an absolute way to guarantee that this will never happen to you. 
And that reason or those two reasons or two steps are the following. Never, ever, ever allow an options contract to expire. That's as simple as it gets. When you're in the last 10 minutes of your trading day and you have an option expiring and you're out of the money and everything is good, just close the position. Yes, you won't get every single penny on this trade. You don't need that. That's not the object. A lot of us, especially if you follow a tasty trade mentality of trading, you're taking your profits at 50% of the credit collected. So let's say you've got 80% of your credit. It's five minutes before the closing bell. Close that position. Don't open yourself up to this type of exposure. Do not let your contract expire after that 90-minute grace period because you never know what's going to happen and why even take that chance? So that's number one. Never let an options contract expire, especially a spread. Because a lot of people will put spreads on multiple times, two, three, five, 10, 20, 50 times. And they might say, okay, I've got $2,000 risk on. I could lose $2,000. But something like this happens and they could lose $800,000, a million dollars and then get liquidated, get a margin call from the broker. So what you can do is just never, ever, ever let your spreads expire. Close them right before the close or earlier in the day or the day before or whenever, just don't let them expire. And then the other thing is, and this might, I might get a little flack for this, but that's okay. One thing I try to tell people is if you're new to options trading and you don't know all the ins and outs, I always recommend to just be a one lot Johnny. If you don't know what a one lot Johnny is, you're not watching Tasty Trade and I will explain it to you. A one lot Johnny is an inexperienced or semi-experienced trader who only trades one lot at a time. I am proud to say I am a one lot Johnny. I am so happy trading one lot because if this person would have woken up and it would have been, say, say, if it were me trading this and I lost one lot and this disaster happened to me, it would have been a $6,000 loss on a one lot, which is bad enough. But I'm usually not comfortable stacking up spreads to a big level, like selling 10 contracts on something. I just haven't done that. And maybe down the road I will with more experience. But when you're newer or you're sort of just cutting your teeth in the options world, I just recommend keeping yourself to one lot. That way, if you do run into a disaster like this, it's not going to be as devastating. This trader lost their entire account because on Tuesday morning when the market opened, the broker saw that they had just used up a $205,000 margin and liquidated their account to reclaim their money. And this trader was left with a zero balance. There's no more money. Their 30 grand was gone because they had $205,000 in stock, in Tesla stock. So a blown account, a devastating loss, horrible loss, a horrible story. And I don't know if this trader is even going to be in the market anymore. Like it might have completely taken them out of the game forever. This would really, really rattle any trader. And I feel horrible for this person. And it's just as simple as that. You, you can, this, this was a terrible, terrible, poor timing um, on the part of this person just not knowing. So be super aware of this 90 minute window. This could happen to anyone. And it's most risky on spreads because people like to double up. They like to get in and sell three, four, five, ten contracts and get really large. When if you take a call, if you get called and you have to accept those shares, you could be looking at hundreds and hundreds of thousands of dollars of actual stock that you have to purchase, which then you could get liquidated. So one, try to be a one lot Johnny if that suits you. I don't want to offend anyone, but one lot is a great way to go until you get some experience. And number two, never, ever, ever let your spreads, put spreads or call spreads, never let them expire. Close them out before expiration. I hope this video was helpful. If you want to see a more detailed, more in-depth look at this problem, I'll post this card right here. This is a great, this guy's channel is fantastic. He does a great breakdown. Check that one out if you like it. And if you enjoyed this video, I'd love to have you as a subscriber. I'd love for you to hit that thumbs up button. And if you want to join our free Facebook group where I was notified of this problem, click below. You'll see a link for our Facebook group or you can go to the banner page on my channel and you'll see a link to our Facebook group there. Hope this was helpful. Thank you for stopping by and we'll see you next time.
Mm-hmm.